to present the 2019 J.J. Greenberg Memorial Award. Please welcome the Executive Director of the Natan Fund, Felicia Herman. Thank you. This is my favorite part of the conference. I mean, aside from the annual meeting, that was also super fun. <laughs> so this is my favorite part, not only because we get to honor an extraordinary colleague, not only because we have the opportunity to highlight what I think are the most important values guiding behavior in philanthropy, but also because we get to talk about JJ for a few minutes, which always chokes me up. <laughs> I had the life-changing privilege of working for Rabbi Yitz and Yitz Greenberg and his son JJ at the Steinhardt Foundation many years ago. I only knew JJ for a few years before the tragic accident that took his life, but he's with me every day. I love his parents, Yitz and Blue, and I feel truly blessed to have them in my life. I work for an organization, Natan, which is named in JJ's memory, and my incredibly strange son, Nathan, who is also named in JJ's memory, embodies a lot of JJ's characteristics. JJ was a force of nature. He was hilarious and warm and creative. He might have been slightly crazy. He loved music, he loved Hebrew, he loved Israel, and he was deeply inspired every day by a love of the Jewish people. After JJ died, so many people came forward to tell stories about the ways that JJ touched their lives, even in the briefest interaction. And if you have moments of despair about humanity, I encourage you to go to the website that his family set up after he died, jjgreenberg.org, and just spend some time reading the stories. Every year, the pictures on the website are a little more out of date, which is sad, but the stories continue to resonate. The stories are about uh, the stories about JJ are stories about people caring for each other, being generous with each other, loving each other, being humble and silly and loving life. They're stories of Jewish joy. And this year's award winner is a perfect exemplar of the kind of Jewish philanthropic professional that JJ was and the kind of human being that he was. This year's winner is the 13th winner of the award. It's good luck and interestingly, only the fourth man to win the award. He comes from a foundation that has been well represented in this award, and not because of any undue influence, but because in hiring their professionals, they specifically select for the qualities that JJ Award winners embody. Qualities like humility, kindness, thoughtfulness, humor, creativity, innovation, being collaborative, and being a persuasive advocate for Judaism, Jewish causes, Israel, and Klal Yisrael. This year's winner is not only a funny and warm creative person with a, with a deep love of the Jewish people, he's also an exceptional Jewish philanthropic professional. He cares about his board members, his professional colleagues, and he cares deeply about his grantees and the organizations that never become grantees. He walks through the world with empathy, compassion, excellence, intelligence, and humility. And you know a good JJ Award winner when they tell you repeatedly how embarrassed they are to have people talk about them. So I'm sort of enjoying it, drawing it out just a little bit longer. Um, I want to invite you um, to welcome the 2019 JJ Greenberg Award winner, director at the Charles and Lynn Schusterman Family Foundation, my friend David Ripberg. morning. Uh, thank you, Felicia. That was so nice, and I'm so lucky to have you as a friend in all this. And thank you, JFN, for hosting this. <clears throat> when I uh, got the call that I was receiving this incredibly humbling award, I had to remember back to the last time I'd received any award at all. 
And my best guess is 1989, Binghamton, New York, JCC basketball. Um, I, it gets worse. Um, I, I got a trophy for, for most improved player, which <laughs> is effectively the lowest level of compliment in JCC basketball in Binghamton, New York. Um, but the truth is, is I don't actually see this as an individual recognition. Uh, I'm part of an amazing team at the Schusterman Foundation, and this has far more to do with the people I work with than, than anything I've done myself. And a bunch of them are here, and I'm grateful for them. Uh, I can't name them all, but allow me a few brief shout outs. Um, one to Stacy and Lynn. Uh, it is a privilege to do this work with you and on behalf of your family and um, on behalf of all of us at Team Schusterman, it is not lost on us how fortunate we are. Um, to Sandy Carden, who I hope is in the room, uh, it's been such a joy to work with you and I've learned an immense amount from you about how to do this work and how to create change and you've been such a good mentor and a friend since really minute one, since my interview. Um, and last but not least to Lisa Eisen, there's a lot I uh, could say and should say, but I'm going to boil it down to this. Everyone should be so lucky to have you as their boss and as their mentor and as their friend and as their role model. And it is amazing to watch what you do, but it's actually more amazing to watch how you do it, which is the perfect segue to J.J. Greenberg. I met, actually, and had one conversation with J.J. Greenberg about 17 years ago, a month before he was tragically killed. It was a Hillel training retreat uh, for my first job. It was a couple of weeks into my professional career. And he approached me and asked me to talk, and I didn't really know why. And I don't have a strong memory about what we spoke about, but I vividly remember how it felt. There was sort of this crowded, chaotic scene. We were at a camp, we were sitting on a bench, there was people all around us. And JJ had this huge smile the entire conversation. He was totally locked in on me, focused on me. And he asked me a ton of questions about myself and about my life and about my interests and about my goals. And he seemed like genuinely interested in having a conversation with me, this totally random young person. And over the last few weeks, as I've talked to people who knew JJ and I've read about him, this experience seems totally commonplace. Felicia just mentioned it. Everyone speaks of his gift for a human connection. People speak about his extraordinary work, and everyone talks about him as the prototypical mensch. Mensch is the word used most often in describing JJ. And I realize now that JJ was probably the first foundation professional I'd ever met. We didn't, we didn't have a lot of those in Binghamton, New York. Um, and that tiny interaction between us actually serves as the perfect example of how I want to do my work and how I think all of us in this room should strive to behave in this work. Kindness and curiosity and trust building, they are not just nice things to do. They are nice things to do. But they're actually essential practices if you want to do this work well, if you want to do this work with excellence, which I imagine all of us do. You know, this work is hard, and it is complicated, and the world seems to be getting crazier, and the work seems to be getting more complicated as a result. And my experience tells me that more often than not, the, it's the people closest to the ground, the people doing the work, our grantees, who are the ones that have the clearest ideas about gaps that exist, can identify opportunities, can identify challenges, and have the best ideas for how to make change. And with the power dynamic that exists in our work between funder and grantee, we're just never gonna get to any of those good ideas unless we are in real relationship with people and those relationships are based in trust. And kindness is the perfect starting point. And lucky for all of us, you do not need to dig too deep into our tradition to understand and learn about the power of kindness. There are many that would argue it is the central value of this entire enterprise. I'm going to argue that it's one of the three legs that the world stands on, study, service, and kindness. And from everything I've learned about JJ, he seemed to be one of those rare people who could balance and exemplify all three of those. And what an amazing example for all of us to aspire to and a lesson in how we should all do this work. Um, I'm very blessed to have some heroes in my own family. My grandparents were partisans in World War II. <clears throat> and when my wife Jenny and I 
talk to our kids, Eli and Amalia, who are convinced that this speech is going to be available on Netflix and Amazon Prime. <laughs> When we speak to them about the kinds of values that we want them to have and the kind of family we want to be in, what we want to live and what we want to uphold, we talk about our family story. Uh, and now, because of this tremendous honor, I'm going to get a chance to talk to them about JJ and everything that he stood for. And I'm grateful, and I'm grateful for this. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the conference.